Namaste, welcome, Sasriya Kal, bonjour to one and all. Such a delight to be surrounded by the energetic and a virtual Gen Z across. I'm so glad to be a part and engaging with the student community. That's something which is very close to my heart. A big thank you to the entire NASCOM team, Dr. Chetan, Saurabh, Prasad, Amita for sharing and creating such an amazing collaboration platform which is bringing students and corporates at a common pitch. Friends, myself, Dr. Kanupriya Manchanda, a spiritually driven HR scholar with 16 plus years of experience in human resource. I did my MBA in specializing in learning and development from Swinburne University, Malvin. The silver lining that COVID brought for me last year was I could create some time to complete my doctorate in employee engagement. Yes, 2021 was that way is a little lucky for me. I'm proud to be a teenager now at InfoBeans and elated to be a part of the journey from an 80 team member to a 1500 headcount today. With my role as Vice President People, I'm currently involved in talent management, building the talent pipeline, nurturing and in-house growing the existing talent, employee engagement, and integrating with our two recently acquired organizations, Philosophy and Awareness. I'm a passionate mom of a 10-year-old son. His name is Dave. I love spending my weekends along with him. And if gets the time, my favorite pastime for a Sunday afternoon is take a good nap. Friends, before we begin and talk about the agility and the ability to ace your interview skills, let's take a step back and understand on the world that we are currently operating. How is our market conditions? VUCA world. I think all of us must be very familiar with this the volatility, the uncertainty, the complexity, the ambiguity that the situations today provide. VUCA was coined by the US College of Army to describe the conditions of a Cold War and was later adapted by a lot of organizations and business sectors to understand and guide the leadership and strategic plannings for deciding the hows, the whys, and the whats of the planning groups. Industry nowadays is so volatile that we are seeing very regular and rapid changes. In fact, change is the only constant that we are having now. There is a lot of uncertainty, unpredictability of how the events are going to be, how we are going to deal with situations which has multitude of complexities and interconnected to the extent that causes a ripple effect. We are not sure where we are operating. The COVID times brought in a change of paradigm for us. We moved from touch to technology. What was a face-to-face -face interaction? Everything moves to a digital world just like overnight. Rather than telling, we got into a trusting zone. The boundaries of a work-life balance was getting phased out. We started talking about now as work-life integrations. How, as organizations, we make it more comfortable, more compassionate for our teams. The pandemic changed from a physical world to a digital world to what we now have as the fidgety world. And this hybrid model is going to exist. And as IT organizations, 2021 was the real boom year for IT. We've been hiring left, right, and center. And the predictions by the McKinsey report for 2022 also claim that there is going to be a 31% increase in hiring. Good news for all of us, IT has a lot of jobs, a lot of opportunities, a lot of growth for all of us involved. The age of virtual interviews getting back. IT was in demand. But the niche skills that would take up the focus 
from again the microservices the python the ruby on rails rr automation azure devops still remain the top queue in the queue from a development programming skills and yet artificial intelligence machine learning blockchain cybersecurity digital marketing ux full stack development rising up the game and as talent planners it brings in us a lot of pressure to focus and bring diversity equity and inclusion in our hiring practices this is the needed to bring different perspectives different strengths different capabilities on a table as we collaborate friends when i say diversity i am not referring to just like a diverse orientation of race age gender sexual orientation religion cultural background but what we are referring to is diverse personality diverse cognitive skills and ensuring we are equipping them with the necessary resources and involving them in this journey while there is a huge demand right it is backed up by a huge supply as well any guesses on how many engineers do graduate from india every year i'm not sure how many clicked up the number but yes you read it right on your screens 1 million engineers graduate every year in india there are more than 3500 engineering colleges across and i'm just talking about india but only 37% of them are able to find their right job what is it what is it that causes the swing in the pendulum when there is a huge demand there is a huge supply yet there is shortage why what is the rational behind it is it the survival of the fittest so as corporates we see that every job opening we are able to attract around 250 resumes and i need to have a team of two recruiters working around to make sure to find those right 5 to 8 best fitments from them and out of those 5 to 8 it's only one candidate who's been given an offer and is being offered. friends i can very well feel your pain as well i had a very hard time struggling finding my own first job in melbourne i remember walking down to at least 50 organizations to drop in my resume and see if i can get any support it took me 3 months to find my first job so i as a fresher that pain is very close to my heart now let's turn let's see it from the employer's lens what is it that an employer is looking for an employer is the employer looking for a seasoned python professional or they are looking at a passionate individual who has an all-rounded personality who's confident and has good communication skills with a willingness to learn and gel well in the culture i repeat as an employer what we are looking at a passionate individual with an all-rounded personality who's confident and a good communicator with the ability to learn and adapt in our culture and if the individual knows python as well it's a big plus this overall cultural alignment will lead to a success career and that is an employer is a shift from hiring a skill to hiring a soul hiring the right fitment for the organization 
But if you look at training big organization brands like Infosys, they hire engineers from almost every stream to do IT jobs. Right? Mechanical, civil are getting trained for doing IT. Why is that? Because they believe that those engineers with that formal education program have developed the necessary aptitude, the communication skills, overall a well-rounded personality who has the ability to learn and adapt to the organization. So organizations are now not just looking for the skills that they are looking at the soul story. And not just start out as a career or a job, but build an engaging and mutually rewarding relationships. Now let me get into your lens. As a candidate, when you look out for a job opportunity, what are the three questions that come in your mind? Let me take a pause. And think, what are those three questions that comes to your mind whenever you hear about the job opportunity? I'm going to be putting down in the next slide as what were those questions that came into my mind. What would be my CPC? Would there be enough growth opportunity? Would they send me on site? Friends, I'm not denying that these are not important. But as a candidate, as a potential team member, we need to understand there is a lot that needs to go before we achieve on this and we talk about. In the next 20 minutes or so, I would like to bring you forward the ACE that can help you bridge what an organization is looking at, what a candidate is looking at and how we can bridge the gap to the ACE that I'm going to talk about. So my, again, ACE is not something really a bookish gyan or a concept that we would, you might find it on the internet, but something that I have dwelled upon based on my own experience and what has worked out for me, as well as I've seen that working down, working it out at the ground. So ACE being authentic, establishing the connect and showcasing your energy. Being authentic, establishing the connect and showcasing your energy. Let's pick up one by one and have a deep dive. To begin with, let's start with being authentic. Authenticity in two perspectives. First, Authenticity with your passion. What is it that you are looking for? And then the authenticity in your preparation, the genuinity that puts in. Whenever you come across a job opportunity, I urge you, before starting jumping or thinking about anything else, ask yourself these five why. These five buys will help you understand what is about the company, what role is it, what is the job description there, which industry are they operating, what domain is it, which are the business customers, who are the end users there, what is it aligning with my long term and my short term goal, and where do you see this job fitting in your big picture. And it's very true, it is the most neglected step that I have seen happening in my last 16 years of journey. We tend to give it a pass on. As long as the company is offering 8 lakhs as a good salary package, I really don't worry about anything. I just need to crack the interview. It's a good attitude to have. But is it going to take you till the end is it going to solve the purpose that is it aligning with your passion or not is very important. 
and many at times it's not difficult it's no harm in admitting that i don't really know what my passion is i really don't know what it is all i need to worry about is i have on like a good compensation i want to buy a house of my own i want to bring a car of my own i want to help my parents i want to make sure i give the best in the world for them yes that's the outcome of it try and understand what your passion is oh it's a good brand to work with what if it's starting with the role as a device support engineer i will mend my way let me get into the organization i will find some solution no doubt some people are able to find the solutions but for the majority of them it does not work if you are looking at a developer position if you if coding is what that inspires you do not think of building your career as starting your career as a quality assurance engineer you might be wasting your crucial foundation years of your life do pause and reflect what is it that you are looking at and once that alignment is there do not leave a stone unturned to prepare for it a very interesting statistics that shows that only 2% of the interviews candidates are called for an interview what have been applied for is it luck or is it they worked hard enough to get friends preparation is the key any job role that you need to apply for need at least a preparation of 40 man hours five working days to actually ace that interview build your own personal brand use the interview as your opportunity to showcase your competencies to showcase your skills your linkedin profile is as good as you standing in front of the person every bit counts your endorsements your recommendations the groups that you are a part of the articles that you read the comments that you make everything is being valued i'll be candid here as a recruiter being hiring like almost 700 plus team members every year we do a social profiling for each and every candidate before rolling out an offer there is a team that looks out on the individuals facebook linkedin twitter and instagram accounts and see whether the individual would be the right culture fitment for the organization prepare for your exam prepare for an interview is as good as you coming forward and putting your best foot in use the opportunities and most of the cases my personal experience says that most of the times i get most disappointed whenever i ask anecdotes questions which are like very common right no you don't really get kind of a question that you have not heard of it's not really a rocket science it is your preparation which can make that difference tell me about an accomplishment you are most proud of a mistake that you made a difficult situation that you handled a thing with where a situation where things did not happen the way you planned off use these questions as an opportunity to build a story around it. use an opportunity to let the person know your own competencies i'll share a approach that talks about and might be many of you would have already heard of this star technique whenever you are kind of explaining a situation or sharing it across it's important to bring the broad context share what the situation is and then in that situation what task were you responsible for and then 
the actions that you took to take care of it and what were the end results. This brings the complete perspective to the interviewer. Let me try to explain it with an example. For instance, I been asked like, tell me where things did not happen as you planned for. So yeah, there was a situation where it was our annual tech fest, where members from the third and the final year were together making up a project and made to present it in front of the jury. In our team, it was Rashmi from the fourth year, myself and two of my colleagues. As for the plan, we had our own modules and we were building an e-commerce application for managing the delivery of the essentials during the pandemic times. I was working on the payment gateway. Rashmi was handling the overall architecture and being the linchpin and collaborating among all of us. Unfortunately, a week before, Rashmi met with a bad accident. She got her right leg fractured and it was a terrible thing. We were now a three member team in the group. We were at a difficult spot. She was the linchpin between us. It was an unforeseen situation. And let me be candid as college time with deliverables, we had procrastinated a lot of our stuff till the deadline. So my own bit was missing in, and I actually had to own Rashmi's task as well. Gave me the lesson. We tried to give it our best foot forward. Together we brought it as a team. We could manage taking the additional responsibility. While I ensured to do the UAT complete, I still worked out on creating the presentation, showcasing, building all the modules together, tying them in, creating a deck and delivering the presentation. It was elated when we actually finally delivered it. I was glad that our presentation was greatly appreciated and we could respond to all the queries of the jury. We packed the third place out of all the 62 entries. That was a real proud moment. And told me, taught me the lesson. You should always be prepared for anything uncertain can happen and not to procrastinate till the end. So, friends, with this example, we talk about the situation. What was the scenario? It was the annual tech fest as a competition. Tried to be genuine, showed my weaknesses. We procrastinated. We did not have a backup plan. Showed our vulnerability. Took up the charge. Worked hard showcase the results, brought a little context with numbers as where do we fall in the box. This anecdotes would help you create an example and make an impact. The next very important piece, even before you interact, it is your resume that is interacting. And only 2% of the candidates who apply for a job are selected for an interview. Okay, you probably put a hand on your heart and tell me how many of us do that? If we create a resume, upload it on nokri.com and apply with the same resume on all the positions that we feel are apt for us. I can see feel I might be getting the nods and the smiles down there. This is the biggest mistake as recruiters that we end up making. Don't forget to dust off your resume. Keep only what is relevant, what is needed. Tailor made it. Again, I'm not saying that you need to fudge information. I'm saying highlight what is needed for that particular role. Highlight according to the job description, the rules and responsibilities that are met in. Most of the candidates do not even read the job description before they come down for the interview. Your resume should never be more than two pages. The famous quote by Vivekananda: I would have written you a shorter letter, 
if I had more time. A five page resume doesn't show that you have done a lot. It showcases that you are not prepared for it. Have a professional email address. Identify what needs to be quoted. Your academic percentages is not an essential. You have been mailing 63%. Do not quote. But if you have 85%, do quote. So choose your battles. And very, very important tip. And statistics proved it that 85% of the people lie on their resumes. Friends, as recruiters, we are trained to catch it. We are trained to catch those discrepancies. We are trained to dwell and ask in-depth questions to do it. Nobody is going to put a finger on you that you lied. But that could be one of your major reasons for your rejection. Be candid. With that, so being authentic, being well prepared, aligning it with your passion is a very, very first important step. Next, let's move on to the technique of establishing the connect. When we are actually having a conversation between it's not a conversation between an organization and a college. It's an organization between the two souls. It is Kanupriya and Hatib who are having an interview discussion. And we need to establish that connect. Now, how do we do about it? Try to get into my shoes and see from a storytelling perspective. As an interviewer, I would be interacting five to eight candidates for the same job role. If it's a campus interview, probably 15 candidates in a day, right, for the same role. What is exciting for me? How would I remember you as a differentiator among the other people who are there? In case you know that the person, you know who the interviewer is, try to do your research. Understand, do the homework for the individual. What kind of articles does the person like? Which groups the person is a part of? The conferences that they attend? The voluntary work that they do? Their hobbies? These could be those common interests you could pick something for and do the read. In case you're not aware who the interviewer is, do the necessary research about the company. And when your conversations start to dry up, Use these pointers as a filler to instigate that energy, to establish that connect, to let them remember Hatim as the individual whose conversation stood out. And storytelling goes minds. You always recall the story. You don't recall the facts. Body language, gestures, and eye contacts. Again, I'm sure many of you might be aware, it's only 7% of the words that we communicate forms the overall communication effectiveness. 38% goes as how do we say it? The tone, the voice, the rate of our speech, the volume. And 55% is the non-verbal cues, the general appearance, the facial expressions, the body language, the gestures. This showcases how forthcoming you as an individual are for the conversations. And with virtual events, it is even more important. Virtual interviews make it even more critical. Friends, a poor internet connection in a virtual interview is equivalent to a poor communication. Make sure you have a good internet connectivity. Your tech is updated. You're using the right hardware. And you've mastered the tool, whether it is Zoom, WebEx, Cisco, 
Gmail, Hangouts, MS Teams, any tool that you are using, or even Instagram, we are taking video interviews. You master the tool that you have. Do not assume things would fall in place. How your light should be positioned, you should be looking at the web camera and not looking at the image that you see in your screen. If I look at the image, you see my eyes would go down. And if I look at the web camera, it is different. As a user, I have a tendency to look at the image, but that distracts. I need to look at the camera right in there. So virtual interviews, getting your basics sorted is very, very important. And another side is your ability to listen. Don't be ready to prepare. So if you've done a lot of preparation, okay, I have prepared about my hobbies and what do I do, right? The first thing the interviewer asks you, how do you generally spend your weekend? Your weekend is not necessarily entirely about hobby. It would have a pinch to a part of it. So give that spin to your answer. Listen carefully what the person is looking at. And do not give the answer what you have prepared. And lighter, stay calm. Have your lighter moments. Remember, an interviewer is speaking to 15 candidates. He or she is going to remember the lighter moments. You might be thinking about it. Let that anxiety not be shown by your body. Relax. Don't procrastinate. Be prepared and you should be able to make it happen. These moments, those fun moments, are what is going to make it more comfortable for you. And let the interview believe that you are much more confident and a pleasing personality to talk to. And establish, the connect with the person who's interviewing. Okay, moving on to the E. The energy, the enthusiasm, the confidence that you interact with. As an individual, it's very important to showcase the energy with your preparedness, with the confidence, the way you are dressed up, how punctual you are. So important bits, confidence. How do you show that you're confident? The way you shake your hand, your voice modulations, your tone, smile on your face, your ability to handle humor, sarcasm. And all of this, again, lies with practice. Try the mirror technique. Tell me something about yourself. The most common question that you hear in interviews. Could you rehearse it, speaking, seeing the mirror and talking to it for at least five times before you jump into the interview? Do a video recording of your interview. Answer it and watch the recording. Believe me, friends, 60% of your bits, you could resolve your own self. You would not need a mentor. You would not need a coach, but you could do it your own self. Power dress. The way your dressing goes has a very high impact in creating the first impression. I've been asked this question many a times in multiple forums. Which is it a better attire, an Indian wear or a Western wear? There is no thumb there. Wear what makes you comfortable in attire that you are more confident in and you are comfortable. Most of us do the mistake to go and get a brand new suit stitched out for a critical interview buy a new shirt or a new pair of shoes. 
be one of the biggest blunders you can Always wear something that you've already worn before and you are comfortable. You do not want to introduce any new variable, any new thing in which could create any anxiety or a discomfort to you. So power dress and use something that you are comfortable with. Be punctual. Punctuality, friends, is not about just time. It is about respecting your own commitment and respecting the other person's commitment. Plan for every bit, the traffic, the time to park, the finding the right cabin. There's nobody could be at the reception. I might need to wait. I might need a bio break. Everything that you think of, account. There is no harm reaching 15 minutes prior. But it might cause you a big harm reaching even one minute late. Organizations are looking at people who have good ability to learn. How does that, how do you judge about an ability to learn? You just have like 45 to 60 minutes in an interview. How do you do that? Your ability to observe what is happening and act accordingly is a demonstration that yes, you are a quick learner. You are a good observer. If in an organization you go for an interview, there are people that are addressing each other by their first names, you should adapt. If there are areas where you Try and find an opportunity where you can have a small talk with any person who's been a You might get some good insights and the person, would, the interviewer would get a feel that yes, the person is energetic, wants to mingle, wants to know other people. And towards the end of an interview, make sure that you close the loop, seek feedback for yourself. Again, don't intrude. The person might be too tired and might not be willing. If it gets a close one-liner answer, stop it there. Try and see if you could establish a connection. Send a LinkedIn request to your interviewer. Try and see that would you be able to get any feedback for yourself? That post-interview follow-up, what is the next action step should be cleared with you? So that, with that, I bring into a closure of my ACE that has helped me work out. Being authentic, follow your passion, Pre be prepared genuinely. It needs investment. Just do not accept an interview and walk in. During your interviews, you're connecting with the soul. Try to build that relationship, use stories, Use positive body language, listen to them, try to create humor, try to get, establish a relationship and showcase your energy, your confidence with your dress, with your attire, with your being on time and your observations. So this is here, Kanupriya, what has worked out sharing, what has worked out for me and I hope was but you guys also find it helpful and it would work out for you. We'd love to stay connected with all of you, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, email, I'm all there for you and would love to help you ace your interview. Thank you so much, everyone. Signing off, bye-bye.